Have you ever wondered why some steaks taste incredible? Juicy, tender, and full of flavor, while others are just average? Here's the secret. It's not only about how the meat is cooked. The real difference starts long before the animal ever reaches the butcher shop. In this video, you'll discover the top five meat quality traits that every farmer and rancher should look for these when choosing breeding cattle. Whether you're starting a small herd or improving an existing one, these five traits will help you raise animals that produce premium beef, the kind that keeps customers coming back for more. So grab your notebook, because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to look for when selecting your next bull or heifer. Let's start with one of the most important meat quality traits, marbling. You've probably heard that term before, but what does it really mean? Marbling is the small white flecks of fat you see inside the muscle, not the thick layer of fat on the outside. These tiny streaks of fat make a big difference. They melt during cooking, keeping the meat juicy, tender, and packed with flavor. Cattle that naturally produce good marbling are worth more at market because their beef grades higher, often earning choice or prime ratings. That means more value for you and better eating quality for your customers. But here's the trick. Marbling isn't something you can fix with feed alone. It mostly comes down to genetics. When choosing breeding stock, look for animals from bloodlines known for consistent marbling, like Angus or Wagyu crosses. Even within commercial herds, you can see differences between sires. A bull that passes on early marbling can raise the overall quality of your entire herd. Just remember, more fat isn't always better. You want balanced marbling, not excessive external fat that reduces yield. The goal is tender, flavorful beef that keeps its shape and texture on the plate. So once you've got marbling covered, what's next? Because even a well-marbled steak can disappoint if the texture isn't right. That's where our second trait comes in, tenderness. Tenderness is all about how easily the meat breaks apart when you bite it. If the muscle fibers are tough or chewy, it doesn't matter how much marbling you have, the eating experience just won't be the same. Several factors affect tenderness. Genetics plays a big role. Some cattle simply have muscle structures that produce softer meat. Younger animals also tend to be more tender because their connective tissues haven't hardened yet. But that's not all. Stress before slaughter can make meat tougher. Cattle that are calm, well-fed, and handled gently tend to have better muscle quality. That's why low stress management isn't just about animal welfare. It directly affects the beef on your plate. When selecting breeding animals, look for lines known for good eating quality, not just fast growth. For example, some Angus and Shorthorn bloodlines are famous for producing tender beef. Also, some genetic tests today can help identify animals that carry tenderness markers. So, tenderness tells you how the meat feels when you eat it. But our next trait is about how much of that good quality meat you actually get from the animal. Let's move to the third trait, yield and muscling, which decide how much saleable meat ends up on your table. In simple terms, yield is the amount of saleable meat you get from the animal's carcass. Not all cattle are built the same. Some might look big, but carry a lot of fat or bone instead of muscle. Others have a strong, well-shaped body that gives you more usable meat from each carcass. When you're selecting breeding cattle, look for animals with good muscling, especially through the hindquarters, loin, and shoulder areas. These are the high-value cuts that determine how profitable your beef will be. A steer 
with deep, wide loins and firm muscle definition, usually produces a higher dressing percentage, meaning more meat, less waste. But balance is key. You don't want extreme muscling that reduces marbling or tenderness. The ideal animal has strong muscle tone and just enough internal fat to keep the meat flavorful. Breeds like Limousin, Charolais, and Simmental are known for high yield, while Angus or Hereford lines often strike the right balance between yield and marbling. So, yield and muscling tell you how much meat you'll get, but there's another question that really affects your bottom line. How fast can those animals reach that ideal finish? That's where our fourth trait comes in. Growth efficiency and maturity, and it's one you don't want to overlook. Growth efficiency is all about how quickly and effectively an animal turns feed into muscle. In simple terms, the more weight they gain from the same amount of feed, the better. Cattle that grow efficiently help you save on feed costs, reach market weight sooner, and keep your operation more profitable. But there's another side to it, maturity. Younger animals, especially those finished at the right time, tend to have more tender meat with a finer texture. Choosing breeding stock with strong genetics for efficient growth can make a huge difference. For example, a bull whose calves reach finishing weight at 18 months instead of 24 can shorten your production cycle and increase yearly returns. However, faster isn't always better if it sacrifices meat quality. You want cattle that grow quickly and maintain marbling and tenderness as they mature. That's why balanced genetics, not just size or speed, matter most. So growth efficiency and maturity tell you how soon you'll get that high quality beef ready for market. But even if you get everything right, marbling, tenderness, yield, and growth, there's one last piece that can still make or break your beef's final value. Let's move to the fifth and final trait, appearance and carcass quality, the finishing touch that determines how your beef looks and sells. This trait includes the color of the meat, the color and texture of the fat, and the overall look of the carcass after processing. These factors play a huge role in how customers judge quality, both in the butcher shop and at the dinner table. High quality beef should have a bright cherry red color with firm white fat. That signals freshness, proper handling, and good feeding. On the other hand, dark meat or yellow fat often suggests older animals, stress before slaughter, or poor finishing. It's not just about looks, though. The color and fat quality reflect how well the animal was raised and managed. Calm handling, balanced feed, and good genetics all help produce clean, attractive carcasses that hold their color longer. When selecting breeding cattle, check their history if possible. Some bloodlines are known for better carcass appearance and higher consistency in the chill room. Choosing those genetics means your beef will not only taste great, but look premium too. In the end, carcasses appearance can be the difference between a standard sale and a top grade premium cut. It's the final proof of all the hard work you've put into breeding, feeding, and handling your cattle the right way. Now that we've covered all five traits, let's bring it all together and see how you can use this knowledge to improve your herd and your profits. So now you know, producing high quality beef starts long before processing. It begins right in your pasture with the cattle you choose to breed and raise. Let's quickly recap the five key meat quality traits that make the biggest difference. Marbling for that juicy, flavorful bite. Tenderness for a smooth, easy-to-eat texture. Yield and muscling for more saleable meat per animal. Growth efficiency for faster, cost-effective production. 
and appearance and carcass quality for the final polish that sells your beef at a premium. When you combine these traits in your breeding program, you're not just improving your herd, you're building a reputation for quality that lasts for generations. So next time you're at a sale yard or choosing your next bull or heifer, don't just look at size or price. Look for the traits that create beef people remember. Tender, flavorful, and beautifully marbled. Because great meat doesn't start in the kitchen, it starts with you and the choices you make on your farm. Thanks for watching Livestock Insights. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for more guides to help you raise healthier, more profitable livestock.